Santa. I already sent my Christmas list, but I need help with something else. It's almost the 25th, but it just doesn't feel like Christmas yet. I've sung carols, drank cocoa, I've even made a gingerbread house. But I think something is missing. Is there anything you can do to help? Sincerely, your friend, Alicia. Dear Alicia, Merry Christmas Eve. Some Christmas help you will receive. Get to Grand Central Station and don't delay. Your Christmas help is on the way. Your friend, Santa. Yes, check your pocket. A train ticket? Oh, oh, oh. For the Christmas Express? Whoa. It's the most wonderful time of the year With the kids jingle banding and everyone telling you be of good cheer It's the most wonderful time of the year It's the high, happiest season of all With those holiday greetings and gay happy meetings with friends Take your seats. The Christmas Express is leaving the station. Did you have a good time at Grand Central Station? I had a great time. But where are we going? I was hoping to find Christmas. Oh, you just wait. We're on our way to Christmas, but we have a few stops to make. We're going to help a couple of people along the way. Like me? Like you. It's the most wonderful time of the year. But sometimes people need help feeling the wonder. Looks like it's time for another stop. Why are we in the Old Wild West? The Christmas Express stops wherever and whenever it's needed. Whoa, that's a weird looking cowboy out there. He looks green. Green? I've seen this guy before. Every year he tries to rob the train. But this time, I have a secret weapon to stop him. What's in there? It's full of joy. Joy? How do you put joy in a box? Is it the new iPhone 11 Pro Max? <laughs> Not quite. Okay, kids, grab your boots and cowboy hats. We've arrived at the old Wild West. Yay! Howdy. What do we have here? The Christmas Express? You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Yes, you really are a hue. You're as cuddly as a cactus. You're as charming as an eel, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> You're a vile one, Mr. Grinch. Yes. You've got termites in your teeth. You've got all the cuddly sweetness of a seasick crocodile, Mr. Grinch. Ah! Time's up. Wait! Alicia, do you remember that box of joy I was telling you about? I do. 
think it's time to give Mr. Grinch his Christmas present. Maybe this will help cheer him up. Aww. Merry Christmas, Mr. Grinch. Just what I always wanted. A friend. Christmas joy. To the max. Okay, kids. Let's get back on the train. I'm gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride until I can't no more. Gonna take my horse to the old town road. I'm gonna ride until I can't no more. The Grinch wasn't so bad after all. Never underestimate the power of a gift. Little Max should keep him off the naughty list for a while. Is that what Christmas is about? Getting the perfect gift? Well, the most perfect gift doesn't come in a box, and it can be easy to miss with all the holiday hustle. What is it? You'll see it before we're done, I promise. Time for another stop. It's all snowy outside. Is this the North Pole? It sure is. And you see those lights out there? That's Santa's workshop. Santa's here? Yeah, but it looks like his sleigh is stuck. I think he needs our help. We are going to help Santa? His sleigh runs on Christmas spirit. If we go down there and sing, we can get him off the ground. But it can't just be any old song. It, it needs to be great. Jingle bells? No. Frosty? Not quite. Santa Claus is coming to town. That's it. But perhaps not the version you know. Okay, kids, grab your hats, scarves, and mittens. It's always snowing at the North Pole. This is gonna be groovy, ho, ho, baby. Ho. Merry Christmas! Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Santa Claus coming to town. You better watch out. You better not cry. You better not pout. I'm telling you why. to help save Christmas. That was amazing. I love Christmas. Santa is awesome, and I love the North Pole. But if you want to find Christmas, we have one more stop to make. Where? The shopping mall for last minute discounts? Even better. The place where the wonder of Christmas began. You might have heard the story. A long time ago, shepherds were keeping watch over their sheep at night when an angel of the Lord appeared to them and said, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born in the little town of Bethlehem. 
all of a sudden, the sky was filled with angels celebrating and singing rejoice, rejoice, and glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth and goodwill to all. They were singing songs about Jesus. That's right. You know, Alicia, Santa told me you felt something was missing from Christmas this year. Is that so? Well, I'm glad you asked for help. It can be so easy to forget the true meaning of Christmas with all the hustle and bustle. Sometimes we need to be reminded of what Christmas is all about. Do you want to see that perfect gift I was telling you about earlier? That sounds wonderful. Next stop, the very first Christmas. Why do we celebrate this baby? The Bible says that an angel revealed to a virgin named Mary that she'd give birth to a son and his name would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now think about it. God with us. What does it mean? The message of Christmas is God's presence. If you're feeling down, if you're feeling discouraged, if you're feeling depressed, God with us brings us hope. God with us gives us a second chance. God with us means we can be forgiven because the Son of God is born and His name is Jesus. He is with us. Are you with me? And you can rejoice today because God is with you. He's with you in your depression. He's with you in your discouragement. He's with you when you're lonely. He's with you in your sickness. He's with you whenever you're going through hard times. God is with you no matter what you're going through. God is with you. So we can rejoice. 
We can rejoice because the God who is with us will give his power and his strength and his love for us to overcome anything that we're facing in, his, in our life. Listen, it's our hope and prayer this Christmas that you would experience real joy and real hope and peace that comes from the God who is with you. Say this with me. God is with me. Oh, say it with me. God is with me. God is with me. Let's all stand and sing to the God who is with us right now. Well, Merry Christmas Central. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's put our hands together and let's sing together. Come on. Sing joy to the world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Sing and heaven and nature sing.
you're here to celebrate Christmas at Central with us. And I want you to know if this is your first time in Central, this is a place where it's okay to not be okay. That means you can come as you are, you belong, and we are so glad you're here. Right, Central family? Let's welcome all of our first time guests. Our experience is just an over an hour, and right at the end, we would love to meet you at any of our exits. There's a Next Steps booth. We have a free Christmas gift we want to give you. And you're surrounded by some of the greatest people in the world. That's the Central family. I'm surrounded by some incredible people up here as well. We want to give you the opportunity right now to just turn around and wish a few people near you. Merry Christmas before you take your seat. I heard 90s USA tracksuit. This won the gold medal in Barcelona. Bro, it is 40 degrees outside. You look ridiculous. Yes. And you look comfortable. <laughs> All right. We, we've got something to tell them. Let's get that groove going again. Hey, January 11th and 12th, Montel Jordan's going to be in the house at Central. That's right. And not only is he going to share with us this hit, this is how we do it. He's going to tell us about his story. He's even going to lead us in worship, Nick. It is really hard to hear you talking about worship in this outfit. It's awkward. We're going to get some clothes on him. Hey, something that's not awkward, something we celebrate here at Central is life change stories. Check out Shabisa's story. Hey, everybody. Merry Christmas. We're so glad that you're joining us. My name's Chloe, and here at Central, we're all about celebrating stories. So I wanted to take a few minutes to share with you about our initiative, Hope for Kids. Every year through Hope for Kids, we're able to bless under-resourced children and families throughout our community. We recently heard about a woman named Shamise, a single mother of two who suffered a stroke and is currently unable to work. She was uncertain if she could afford rent during the holiday season, let alone provide food and gifts for her kids. And with a non-working vehicle and an eviction notice on her door, she was starting to lose hope. But thanks to your generosity, the Central family was able to step in and surprise her in her hour of need. Let's check this out. Well, your Central family has been watching this, the perseverance through the struggle that you had right now. And I know through this season you were worried with the stroke of how you were going to provide Christmas, what you were going to do. And so through um, the Hope for Kids initiative, we've been able to gather uh, some toys to make sure that Christmas happens for you. You have a tree. <laughs> you have food in your cupboards. You have decorations. You have a family that loves you. So you're blessed. Thank you. But we're not done with you yet. Oh. <laughs> okay. I know that just the uncertainty as far as work and all of the struggle, um, you don't have to worry about rent for two months. I'm 
I'm so glad that I have you all guys, all you guys, um, with me through it all. I appreciate y'all. Like, <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I really do. We love Shamise and her family, and her story represents one of the thousands of families that we're able to bless through our Hope for Kids initiative every single year in so many different ways. Like the God Behind Bars event, All is Bright, an event where incarcerated parents are reunited with their kids. It's been about three years since, since I've been able to be able to see him, and this has been so amazing to be able to reunite with him like that. So, I mean, I'm thankful for everything he has been doing. It's, it's awesome. Our Hope for Kids Night, where we blessed over 250 under-resourced families at Central with warm clothes, a hot meal, and Christmas gifts for the kids. I had such a fun night. We got to eat food and play games. Cookies with kind of like chocolate milk. I almost like ate all of mine, and then I did. Thank you, Sensor. Our food pantry, which is the largest in all of Nevada and has fed hundreds of families twice a week, nearly 50,000 people just this year, hosted events like The Drop, where we fed 3,500 people in a single day, provided 200,000 articles of clothing, haircuts, and other hygienic needs, as well as automotive work. Partnering with organizations like Three Square and Veterans Village, serving those who have served and are now in need. Club Christ, a local nonprofit organization that provides a safe space and support system for at risk youth in our city. The Leukemia Lymphoma Society, a night of hope for children with terminal illnesses. And through our Central Care Department, that has helped over 31,000 individuals just this year. The list goes on and on, and we're not done yet. None of this would be possible without your generosity. This year, through our Hope for Kids initiative, your gift of $47 can change the life of a child in need. So don't wait, sponsor a kid today. Go to hopeforkids.gift to shine a bright light of hope this year. So exciting to see how the Central family is blessing kids, isn't it? Just a moment, we're gonna receive our Christmas offering, but before we do, can I just explain why it's so important? The Bible says that God was a giver, that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. The Bible also says it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. When our kids were little, we tried to teach them this truth in so many different ways, especially at Christmas. And one of my favorite ways at Christmas was on Christmas Day, before we'd open up presents, our family would get in a car, we'd make our way down to where our church was serving the homeless community a hot meal on Christmas Day. My kids would get on the front line and they would serve that meal. And their whole heart and attitude changed to gratefulness and thankfulness as they served those that meal. And they were learning at Christmas that Christmas isn't just about what you can get, but Christmas is about what you can give to bless others. Now, I was blown away last week when I showed up at our Hope for Kids initiative where we were blessing 250 under-resourced families right here at Central. And I looked over to the food line and guess who was serving food? My grandkids were serving food to these families and I could see the joy on their face and they were learning this truth that Christmas isn't about what you can get. Christmas is about what you can give to bless others in need. Are you with me? That's where real joy comes from. And that's what our Hope for Kids initiative is all about. We're trying to bless kids whose parents are incarcerated, kids who are sick, kids who are just hungry, kids who come from very tremendous needs and they just need a second opportunity and you and I can make a difference in their life. We can give to change a kid's life forever. Listen, let me brag for just a minute of what God's been doing through the generosity of the Central family. Did you know last year alone, because of the generosity of our Hope for Kids Christmas offering last December and throughout the year, we've now fed over 50,000 people through our food pantry, come on. But it doesn't have to end there. 
Tens of thousands of kids in our city don't have adequate amounts of food available to them. And we can make a difference. And I don't know about you, but I don't think a single kid in the city of Las Vegas should go to bed at night hungry. Do you? And we can give to change their life. And you know, we can also give to give second chances to kids who just need to know that there's a God who loves them, that can provide for them and wants to be in relationship with them. And hope for kids will make that difference. Now, when we looked at Christmas and we thought about this offering and we saw the tens of thousands of kids in need in our city, we didn't just set a small goal, a few hundred or a few thousand. We want to bless 15 thousand kids lives this Christmas. Come on, somebody. And I want to encourage you to give that gift. $47 can change a kid's life. And over the past several weeks, the Central Family's been giving to this initiative. They've been going out to the display, getting their photo taken, just marking the day that they gave to change a kid's life for all of eternity. In fact, our location pastor, Nick and Aaron, are out at the display in our lobby. Let's throw it to them. They'll tell us more about it. Nick, you there? Yeah, Mike, Aaron and I are out in front of our Hope for Kids display where every picture on this display represents a child who has been sponsored by a Central family member so far. In Central, so far, we've sponsored 10,006 kids. That's absolutely incredible, but there's more to sponsor, and Aaron's going to run us through how. Let's pass it over to her. Yes, so step one, find someone in the lobby wearing a red apron. They will help you give a gift today. And then step two, head over to the display and get your photo taken. Nick, you want to jump in this with me? Perfect. And then by the time you get your photo taken and you get to the printer, our team will actually already have your photo printed out for you, and they'll help you find your place on the display. So this is 103, row 11. Perfect. I'm going to put that right there. And if you're joining us online, we want you to be a part of this display as well. All you have to do is post a photo on Instagram using the hashtag HopeForKids2019. Let's finish this out strong. Let's hit our goal of sponsoring 15,000 kids this holiday season. Back to you, Mike. All right. Thank you, Aaron and Nick. Let's give it up for them. How many believe we can bless 15,000 kids' lives this Christmas? Come on. I do too. But we can't do it without you. So I'm gonna ask you, would you give a gift on behalf of a kid today? It's easy to give. If you give by check or cash, you can give in the offerings passed or at the conclusion of our experience today. Our ushers will have buckets that say hope for kids, you can give there. Or if you're like me, you don't carry cash, but you wanna participate, you can give by credit or debit card. Just find one of our generosity team members out in the lobby. They'll be wearing a red Santa hat with some flashing uh, lights around their neck. Just walk up to them and tell them how many kids you want to sponsor. One, five, ten, hundred 100 or more. They'll put that in there, swipe your credit or debit card, and you'll be changing kids' lives forever. And I'm going to say on behalf of kids in need in our city, thank you in advance for your generosity, for making a difference in their life and, and caring enough to give to those needs. Well, let's just ask God's blessing. Would you join me and ask him to show up in our lives? Well, Jesus, we thank you that you have blessed us so we could be a blessing to others. God, as we give our gifts, use them to change a kid's life. May they know that you love them and want to be in relationship with them through our generosity. God, this Christmas, we invite you into all that we do and experience right here. Show up, speak to us and bless us more than we could possibly imagine. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, right now I'm gonna invite our ushers to receive the offering. If you came prepared to give your ministry fund offering, you can give it at this time. Let's all stand together as we continue to sing to the God who is with us. we have heard on night, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their 
joy has to wait. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory. ready to give birth to Jesus. They were told by the innkeeper that there was no room in the inn. And why the innkeeper wouldn't make room for a pregnant woman, let alone the fact the mother of the Son of God is beyond me. But I know that in the season of Christmas and all the chaos, sometimes it's even hard to make room in our hearts for him. And it's our hope and prayer today that you'll open your heart and allow God to fill you with his hope, with his wonder and his love. And every weekend, we take a moment to pray over the church family for those who are hopeless. I know this might be weird, but wherever you're at, if you need prayer of any sort today, would you just boldly slip your hand up in the air so we can pray with you and for you? Raise your hand up high if we can pray for you. And if you're next to somebody with their hand raised, I want to encourage you to just reach a hand out, maybe even put a hand on their shoulder. Let's pray and ask God to move through our friends' lives. Would you join me? God, we come before you right now. We lift up our brothers and sisters to you. We pray that this Christmas you would fill us with your joy, with your peace. God, we just trade our hopelessness for your hope today. Thank you, God. We give you all the glory and praise. For it's in your name we pray and everyone in this room said together, amen. Let's sing this chorus together, come on. Glory to God, come on. Glory to God, lift your voices. Glory in the highest. Sing it even loud. Glory to God. Come on, church. Glory. Just lift your hands if you feel comfortable and declare this today. Give them the glory. Glory to God. Glory to God.
You having a good time so far, Central family? I want to ask you to remain standing for just a moment. And in just a second, our pastor Judd is going to come share the Christmas story with us. But I want you to know at the end of our experience, if you've never been baptized, today could be the day for you. In fact, we have a brand new area in our lobby where you can get baptized. In fact, there's a baptism going on on the screen right now. I want to encourage you at the end of our experience to just go out there, let them know that you would like to get baptized. It just takes a couple of minutes. We've got to change of clothes for you, a place to change as well. So I encourage you to do that at the end of our experience. But right now, I want to invite you to be seated. Let's put our hands together big as Pastor Judd comes to share a message of hope with us. Well, Merry Christmas, everyone. It's such a joy to have you with us. And I want to say a big welcome, not only to those who are here at our Henderson location, but a big welcome to our Central Family locations, uh, meeting all around the Las Vegas Valley and beyond in Arizona. Uh, big shout out to Central Kingman and Kingman, Arizona. We love you guys. Merry Christmas, as well as to our Central Summerlin family. We're grateful for you. Central Southern Highlands and Sunrise Mountain. Thank you, guys. We want to say a big welcome to everybody who's watching online and also to those who are joining us in our partnership with God Behind Bars and different prison facilities around the country. Thank you guys for being with us. Well, how many of you own a ugly Christmas sweater? All right. Uh, how many you know somebody who has an ugly Christmas sweater and they don't know it's ugly? <laughs> right? Definitely that. But you know, ugly Christmas sweaters are sort of part of the holiday tradition. I went to a party this year, an ugly Christmas sweater party, and I thought maybe I'd get nominated for like most ugliest sweater, right? But I didn't even get the top three. You know, I had lights on and everything, nothing. So uh, I've been trying to up my game for next year, and I took some photos and some ugly Christmas sweaters. Let's see what you think. First of all, how many of you like the movie Elf? Anybody, anybody like Elf? All right, so I just started off with sort of the classic here, you know, Elf, and that's not really an ugly Christmas sweater, not in a big way. But then I decided to take this to a new level with Elf riding on Santa's shoulders. Look at that. <laughs> now we're getting closer, right? Now we're warming up. Then I thought I'd try um, the outfit from A Christmas Story, the movie, little Ralphie. He wants the BB gun, but he gets the bunny suit. You remember that? He's really frustrated by it. So here, here I thought I'd try the bunny suit on for next year, just sort of seeing. You gotta be very secure, guys, to wear that pink bunny suit, I'm telling you. But if none of those work, then I definitely feel like I've found what could be the ugliest Christmas sweater possible, and it's called Shirtless Santa. Let's check this out right here, there it is. The Shirtless Santa sweater. And in case you're wondering, that uh, Santa hat is actually covering a very inappropriate nipple piercing. So anyway, <laughs> there, there it is. All right. Well, you could win the, yeah, I thought we were going to go to the back there. Well, you can win the ugliest Christmas sweater competition if you're willing to pay 20 bucks and lose your dignity, right? There it is. Simple as that. But you know, Christmas can get ugly. And I'm not just talking about the sweaters. It can get ugly. I mean, it's a wonderful time of year, but traffic can get ugly. Come on, somebody. It's crazy out there, right? People driving crazy. Shopping can get ugly. Uh, even, even online shopping can get ugly with uh, porch pirates coming along, snagging different packages. Uh, finances can get ugly. The Christmas list gets bigger. The bank account gets smaller, right? Um, family can get ugly. I know there's some people that are like, man, Seems like we just did Thanksgiving like two weeks ago, and now we got to do this again. We're all getting back together. I need more time to recover. <laughs> it can get ugly, and then emotionally it can get ugly. You live long enough, you'll go through some Christmas seasons without people that uh, you love dearly, or you know you face some Christmas seasons with different family situations. Some of you may, may be there now, or different financial situations, and emotionally it can get. I feel like Christmas is like the best of times and the most challenging of times, right? It exaggerates things in our lives. So if you're lonely, it exaggerates that lonely, right? If, you, if, you, if you're hurting or struggling, it can make it feel like you're struggling even that much more. It's a wonderful time of year. I love it, but it can get ugly. And I want to talk to you today about how we can experience joy even when we're struggling with some ugly in our lives this holiday season. 
And I want to do that by looking at the original Christmas story. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. This is what we do every week here at Central. I'll read this scripture off the screens. When we get to the highlighted word, I'll just ask you to read it out loud, very loud with me. And listen, kids, the louder you read it, the more presence you'll get. Your pastor said so. So here we go. Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 8. Check it out. It says, uh, that night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you what? Good news. Turn to the person next to you and say, good news. Good news that will bring great joy. Turn to the other person next to you and say, great joy. Good news, great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem in the city of David. So the announcement that the angel made to the shepherd on the night that Jesus was born was an announcement of good news and great joy. A Savior had been born. And listen, I believe when we open God's gift and receive God's gift and celebrate God's gift that was delivered that first Christmas, we can re-experience good news, great joy, even when things are a little bit ugly. First principle is to open God's gift. Open God's gift. Uh, I remember when I was in high school, I played football. Uh, I wasn't very good. In fact, uh, I was hardly ever called out onto the field. I was sort of the charity guy on the team. And if they ever called me out in a game, it was always when it didn't matter. You know, I was like special teams when the game was over or whatever. So um, I was sitting on the bench, and I'll never forget, like, uh, I got called, this is the only play I ever made in high school football. I got called up, there was three minutes left in the game, we were playing Dalhart, Texas, they had the ball, they were driving down the field, it looked bad because we were, we were uh, down by I think three points, and so it was bad, it was bleak, right? But somebody got hurt, there was no other backup to the backup, and they had to call me. So the coach looks over there, he's like, Will Hyde, get in the game. I'm like, where's my helmet? Do I have a helmet? Can I borrow your helmet? You know, like I haven't been in a game. I was the guy that at the end of the game, I have to go out and rub stuff on my jersey, you know, so it looked like something happened. Anyway. So I go out on the field, I get in position, the ball snaps, I somehow get around the uh, offensive uh, guard there, I get around them, and... My teammate gets around on the other side, and he sacks the quarterback, and the quarterback fumbles the ball, and the ball starts bouncing towards our end zone, and then I'm running after it, and another guy runs faster than me, and he falls on the ball, and the ball squirts out, and it keeps bouncing towards the end zone. I'm just like Forrest Gump, you know, just keep running, just keep running. I don't know what I'm doing, and this is what, I don't, this is what I'll never forget. The ball, like, supernaturally bounced up into my hands. No joke. And I stopped running. <laughs> and I looked down and I was in the end zone. I scored a touchdown. We won the game, people. The coach comes running out from the other side of the field, man. He ran onto the field. He was so excited. In fact, he used that the rest of the, uh, rest of the season. He'd get everybody in the locker room and be like, guys, we got to step it up. Listen, even Will Height's scoring touchdowns now. You guys got to get it together. But I tell you that story because that's a picture of what grace is. Grace means undeserved favor. That's what it means. And spiritually, when you talk about grace, you're talking about the undeserved favor and forgiveness of God himself towards you in your life. And look, that day on the football field, I didn't do anything to deserve that play. I was just in the right place at the right time. In fact, it had little to do with me. The ball was there. I was there. It just all came together. These shepherds in the field that night, I don't think that the, that the angel made the announcement to them because they had earned it or because they had achieved it. It was just like they won the Super Bowl. They were in the right place at the right time, and the announcement comes. It's good news, and it's great joy, and it's not about your performance, and it's not about how good you are. It's not about how much you have it worked out in your life or how together you are. It's about how good God is. Good news, great joy, because we have a good God, and he's giving you a gift today. A Savior has been born. And when you think about that, first of all, it's good news. It's not good advice. We got a lot of good advice floating around, what to eat, what not to eat, how much to exercise, how much not to exercise, right? Everybody's got advice. 
But the good news of Jesus is news. It's an announcement of something that God has done on our behalf in the past. And because of what he's done on our behalf in the past, we can receive it and believe it and be transformed by it in our lives in the present. It's good news. God has done it. Not only is it good news, um, it's, uh, it's good news that a Savior has been born. Now you think about that. For somebody to be a Savior, they have to save from something. And we need to be saved from the judgment of God. We need to be saved from our own sins. We need to be saved from our own failures and mistakes. We need a Savior. We need somebody to help reconcile us to God. We need somebody to help us deal with our past, our failures, our mistakes, all the junk that we get ourselves into. That we need a Savior. And the Savior has been born in the past. And what God did in the past is more important than what you did in the past. What God did in the past is more important than what you did in the past. Your failures, my failures, our mistakes, it's really about what God has done for us. Romans chapter 3 says, we've all sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. In other words, there's no perfect people except on their resumes, right? But that's short-lived. But let's check it out. Romans chapter 3 verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death. A sin means to miss the mark. And for our sin, the payment for our sin, for our disobedience, for our rebellion, right? It's death and spiritual death. But look, the wages of a sin is death. But the free what? Gift. The free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let's just leave that up there for a minute. First of all, it is a free gift. Some of you, you're going to get some gifts this holiday season. You're going to open some gifts. I hope you get good gifts. I remember when my grandma used to always give me like underwear. You know, I'm like, hey, thanks. Socks. Great. Love it. A tie. Love being a dad. This is awesome. But God's gift is a gift you want. And it's a free gift. When you receive a gift, that's what you do. You receive it, right? You didn't earn it. You don't achieve it. But you accept it and you receive it. And the gift that God offers to each one of us is the gift of eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now it says that the gift of eternal life. We read that together. And I think sometimes we just think of that as like life that goes on forever. But in the actual language where the word was used, eternal life implies more than just a length of time. It also implies a quality of life that we can experience today that goes forward forever into eternity. It's that quality of life that is filled with God and his goodness, that is filled with the fruit of his spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. It's that quality of life. Jesus said, I came to bring you life and life to the full. It's that quality of life that can fill our lives today and every day going forward into eternity. That's God's gift, eternal life. Offered freely to every one of us. How do you receive it? Well, the Bible says if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, that you will be saved. And so our opportunity today is to come before God and receive the gift that he has given us. Some of you, you're already here and you know God has been calling you. He's been tapping you on the shoulder. He's been uh, wooing you to come and to receive the free gift that he offers you today. And all you need to do to receive it is open it and celebrate it. I know for me in my life, when I um, first came to faith in Christ, one of the most significant things that happened to me is when I surrendered my life to Christ. And you can argue, did I surrender my life to Christ because I simply chose to believe or because God chose me and called me to come and surrender my life to him? Either way, here's what I know. When I got down on my knees and surrendered my life to Jesus Christ, everything changed for the better. Everything changed for the better. What does it mean to surrender your life to Christ? It simply means that you believe in your heart and you believe with who you are that Jesus is your Savior and your Redeemer and you trust him with your future. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to have it all worked out, but you're willing to follow him and trust him. And when you do that, you receive the greatest Christmas gift ever given in the universe, the gift of God through Jesus Christ and all that he brings to us in our lives. So open God's gift today. 
open God's gift. Now I want you to notice the angel not only says it's good news, it's great joy, the angel says do not be afraid. One of the things I found in my life is when I start walking in faith, when I open God's gift and remember it every day, it changes my relationship to fear. It changes what I fear. In fact, I went through the Bible and I just captured all the times you'll see that phrase, do not be afraid. Or some translations say, fear not. And I just wrote down all the different times through the Old Testament, moving into the New Testament, that you read the phrase, or most of them, where you read the phrase, fear not. And this is what it says. We're just going to fly over it. It says, fear not, for God is with you. Fear not, for your God hears you. Fear not, for the battle belongs to the Lord. Fear not, for God is coming to save you. Fear not, for he is here to help you. Fear not, for he will strengthen you. Fear not, for the Lord will protect you. Fear not, for he knows your name. Fear not, for he knows the numbers of hairs on your head. And for some of you, it's less today than it was yesterday. Just saying. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Fear not, for he is here to bless you. Fear not, for he will help you. Fear not, for he will heal you. Fear not, for he will give you a great reward. Fear not the insults. Fear not the future. Fear not the secrets. Fear not the powers of humans or the power of hell. He has overcome them once and for all. Fear not, because nothing can separate you from his love, his value, his greater future. Fear not, because he's given you victory and it's his pleasure to give you the kingdom. Fear not, for he is the first and the last, the alpha and the Omega, the king of all rulers. Listen, death couldn't defeat him, the grave couldn't hold him, and the world cannot overcome him. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because it's good news, and it's great joy, and it's more about God and who he is than it is about us and how well we've got it all worked out in our lives right now. Open God's gift in your heart and life. And then secondly, celebrate God's gift. Celebrate it every single day. You know, we often send emojis back and forth. You send people text messages, right? You know, one of my favorites is the fist bump. You know, somebody will say, so, hey, Lamb, fist bump, boom. Meet you at 12 o'clock, hey, fist bump, boom. Coming to Central, see you at Monday night or see you on, on, on Christmas Eve, good, boom, fist bump. Or the high five, right? high five's a good one. I started thinking like, what are the most popular emojis that we send to one another when we're communicating. You ever wonder this? Right, what do you, on three, just yell out whatever you think the most popular emoji is, okay? One, two, three. Let me hear it. Heart, heart with, uh, that's actually a good one. Uh, right here was heart with um, heart eyes. None of us know actually how to say these, what these emojis are, but I've done some research. I got one right here. This is called smiling face with hard eyes. Now, this is not the most popular emoji. This is the third most popular emoji. The third most. And this is like the emoji of love, right? Oh, I love you. You're awesome. Heart. You know, and if you really love somebody, it's like, pop, 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 pop. you know, you just kind of. And then all your friends, if you're in that early love stage or wanting to send the barf. I don't have the barf emoji up here, but you're like, stop. Stop gushing. The second most popular emoji that we send through text messages and social media is this one right here. This is loudly crying face. <laughs> and I think this one often depends on how well this one's going, you know. <laughs> Things aren't going well here, they may, that's a loudly crying face. The number one most popular emoji that we send back and forth is this one right here. Crying face with, or uh, face, uh, what, could say, could, face with tears of joy. Face with tears of joy. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Calm down. Face with tears of joy. And this is like our laughter, right? When we're laughing or somebody tells a joke, that's hilarious. You know, we do face with tears of joy. And when I think about like Christmas, I think God is certainly communicating his love for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, John three sixteen, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But I also think he's the source of joy. And that part of what Christmas is about is when you celebrate what God has done for you every day, it fills you with a great sense of joy. What you celebrate, what I celebrate, tends to be what replicates in our life. When you celebrate Jesus, celebrate what he's done for you, celebrate how he's provided for you, it can begin to replicate joy in your life even when things are ugly and difficult. 
fact, look at what Peter says. First Peter chapter one, verse three says, what a God we have because Jesus was raised from the dead. We've been given a brand new life and we have what? Everything, everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And the future starts now, starts now, it starts today. And then the next sentence he says, so we rejoice even though we face troubles of many kinds. We rejoice even though things may be hard. We rejoice even though finances may be difficult right now. We rejoice even though the divorce may be killing you right now. We rejoice even though family dynamics may just be overwhelming right now. We rejoice even though we aren't sure what the future holds. We rejoice even though we can't find the right guy or the right girl. We rejoice even though work isn't exactly the, our favorite. Like it's not the place we ultimately hoped we'd be, but this is where we are, right? We rejoice even when we come home to our house that looks nothing like the house on HGTV. We rejoice even when we go into that kitchen and you know that kitchen needs work, but it isn't that bad because then you go to the bathroom and you know the bathroom needs work, but then you walk into the bedroom and you know the bedroom needs work, but we rejoice anyway. We rejoice even when our kids don't listen to us. Come on, somebody. As a Dallas Cowboys football fan, I'm learning to rejoice even though every week a different team shows up on the field. People want the Cowboys to win. I'm like, I hope they lose every game now. We need to clean house, people. It's time to start over. But we don't just rejoice. We rejoice because... We rejoice because to you a son has been given and a child has been born. We rejoice because through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we find forgiveness and hope, God's spirit dwelling within us, the gift of eternal life, a relationship with the God who loves us. We rejoice because no matter how difficult or challenging things is, things are, we believe God is good. In fact, he's good even when things in our life don't feel so good right now. We rejoice because whether we have have the right guy or the right girl, more important than all of that is we have a God who fills that void in our life and we can follow him through thick and thin. We rejoice because even when the marriage is hard, even when the relationship's hard, we have a God who loves us, who calls himself the father to the fatherless, who loves us through the dark times and the difficult times, who has said he will never leave us and never forsake us. So no matter what happens, no matter what comes, we never walk alone. We never walk alone. God is with us. When I was 17 years old, I walked through the doors of a church for the first time on my own terms, which basically means my parents didn't make me go. And I was coming out of a four-year drug addiction. In a lot of ways, my life was a complicated web of lies and deceit, sin, I was a mess, and I was so thankful, because when I look back in my life, I realized that God showed me undeserved favor and grace. I thought when I walked in the church that the church would collapse. Some of you felt that way when you came into church right now. You think, man, I'm going to go to church. The ceiling could fall in at any moment. Listen, it is, we've already been down this road with thousands of people. It is a well-architecturally uh, structured building. You don't have to worry about the ceiling falling in. What's available to you is the grace of God if you receive it. If you reach out and believe it. If you surrender your heart and life and say, you know what? I'm willing to do it God's way. Somebody came to service last night. They said, you know, they were so tired of their life and the direction that it had been going. And they didn't plan on this, but they came in. They, they thought, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm leaving the old life behind. I'm embracing the new life God has for me. They surrendered their lives to Christ. After service, they went out into our lobby and they said, I'm going to be baptized as a picture of what I believe in my heart, what God has done in my life. And I'm, I'm moving into this new year with God. It's a new me. I'm committed to him. And so they took that step. People gathered around. Around, cheered her on, celebrated, and any one of you could take that step today. After service, you can go by and get baptized. We've got uh, new changing rooms out here available for you. We've got t-shirts. You, you can put your t-shirt on. We've got towels, everything you need to get baptized, and it could be an amazing way for some of you to mark Christmas in your heart and life this year. That was the moment 
when I said I'm moving forward in my faith with God, this next year is going to be different than the last year. Maybe for some of you, it's simply putting your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ. You know if he's been tapping you on the shoulder, if he's been calling you to come home to him. And it would be my privilege, if you're ready to surrender your life, to just lead you in a prayer to help you take that spiritual step. You can pray this out loud. You can pray it in your heart. There's nothing magical about it. It's just a tool to help you begin your relationship with God and start that journey. So would all of you please bow your heads and close your eyes. If you'd like to follow Jesus in your life today, you can begin that journey by repeating after me either out loud or in your heart, just say, dear God, I thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus into the world. I believe he died on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose again. Forgive me for my sins. Give me the gift of eternal life. Help me face the challenges I'm up against. God, I surrender my life to you. In Christ's name. Friends, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if that's your prayer commitment today, I want to ask you to just slip your hand in the air. Just make eye contact with me just to say before God and to say to me, you're going to follow him in your life today. God bless you guys. Just reach out to him today. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God, I thank you for each individual here, and I pray you'll just move in each of our hearts and lives, particularly for those surrendering to you. I'm so grateful for what you're doing in their life, and I pray you'll fill them with your hope, your love, your joy, your peace, your strength, and use them in awesome ways as they follow you in faith. God, we love you. We celebrate you today. We give you thanks for each of these people in Christ's name. Amen. Let's put our hands together for each of these individuals today. And I'm going to ask all of you to please remain seated for just a moment. If you made a spiritual commitment in your life, I just want to tell you congratulations. We'd love to give you some resources. I'd love to give you three things. Uh, one is an ornament to remember this moment that this Christmas was the Christmas when you surrendered your life. The second is a little pendant, a cross, to remind you of who Jesus is and what he's done for you. And the third is a little book that we put together. It's called How to Follow Jesus, to just give you some really practical insight Trust me, there's lots of pictures, some really practical insight to help you in your spiritual journey as you follow him. All of that's free to you at areas that we call our new beginnings uh, areas. You'll see them under each of our screens down here. There's also in the back on the way out in the upper deck, uh, there's actually six different stations around in this room. So uh, make sure to grab that and uh, let them know you made a spiritual commitment. And if you want to be baptized, you can also just tell anybody at the New Beginnings area, or you can just go on out to the baptismal area. We would love to celebrate with you a Christmas baptism. It would be awesome. So at this time, would you stand together with me? We have a tradition here at Central that we close out our Christmas experiences by singing Silent Night together. So our team's gonna lead us. Let's all sing this together. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Round
want to thank you so much for spending your Christmas with us here at Central. Don't forget if you made a spiritual decision to check out the New Beginnings area. Also, I want you to know we still have six experiences, two tomorrow night and four on Christmas Eve. Tell your friends and family, post it on social media, grab invite cards on the way out. You never know the difference it could make in someone's life. And don't forget to sponsor a kid through our Hope for Kids initiative. Just head out to the lobby and look for somebody out there. Hope you'll join us in 2020 as we kick off our new series, January 4th and 5th. And don't forget Montel Jordan, January 11th and 12th. That's gonna be a great weekend. We hope you have a very, very Merry Christmas. Hang on to Romans chapter eight that says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Merry Christmas, everybody.